Let's dive deeper into the substance of those emails. Chief Washington correspondent James Rosen has that part of the story tonight. In the 296 emails the State Department uploaded, often redacted, then-Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is seen receiving updates on the Benghazi attacks for weeks after they claimed the lives of U.S. Ambassador to Libya Chris Stevens and three other Americans on September 11, 2012. After U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice hit five Sunday talk shows on September 16, dismissing the idea that Benghazi was a terrorist attack, Clinton's Deputy Chief of Staff Jake Sullivan wrote her to say he found one line uttered by Rice, quote, troubling. It was the sentence on ABC's This Week where Rice suggested the investigation into the attacks might reach a different conclusion. We have a strategic plan. We know which, which embassies are more in danger than others. When Under Secretary of State Patrick Kennedy, in charge of all State Department buildings worldwide, wrapped up a tough day of House testimony on October 10, Clinton nervously emailed Sullivan to ask, did we survive the day? Survive, yes, Sullivan replied. Pat helped level set things tonight. Do you have a perception problem? Many Americans don't believe that you've told the truth on Benghazi. Well, you know, I'm going to let the Americans decide that. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> A week after Kennedy's testimony, Clinton appears to have requested from Sullivan, and Sullivan appears to have forwarded to Clinton a copy of the Benghazi talking points that Sullivan and other officials at State, the White House, and CIA had labored over a month earlier when they painstakingly scrubbed the document intended for lawmakers' consumption of its initial references to terrorist involvement. The next day, October 18, Clinton Chief of Staff Cheryl Mills forwarded to the boss a Reuters interview with Abu Khatala, a Libyan militia commander who bragged about being being present for the attacks and who two years later would be arrested and charged for his role in them. It was three months after she read Katala's mocking interview that Clinton famously spun out to Senate lawmakers a scenario that the Benghazi attacks may have benefited from no premeditation at all. Or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? The emails also show a surprisingly cozy confidence between Mills and Matt Olson, then the head of the National Counterterrorism Center. Olson Olson had been the first U.S. official to declare Benghazi a terrorist attack one week after the killings there. But in November 2012, he was privately emailing Clinton's right-hand aide to tell her that he thought congressional hearings on Benghazi were going fine, that his own interrogation by the Accountability Review Board, or ARB, went very well, and also to warn Clinton that, quote, we continue to fend off questions about the unclassified talking points. In general, uh, why would... Uh why would sort of saying it went fine, why would that be inappropriate? I'm just not clear on the necessity of a senior intelligence official communicating with the Secretary of State's chief of staff about these things. Well, I'm, not, why, I'm not clear why you're suggesting there's impropriety. Finally, the emails show that on September 15, 2012, four days after the Benghazi attacks, Hillary Clinton, who famously asked if Barack Obama was ready for the 3 a.m. phone call, herself slept through the meeting where she was supposed to receive the president's daily brief, the most sensitive classified document that the intelligence community produces. In fact, Clinton awoke that day at 10.40 a.m. Shannon. All right, much more with the panel on all of these new emails. James Rosen at the State Department. Thank you, James. Thank you.